You don't need to. Climb I don't need to? Oh. It's all synced up. Because oh. it's going straight in with the image. How cool. Okay. Wow. Well, let's start. Hi, whoa. Whoa. Hi, whoa. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Broken and Brilliant. I'm Carrie O'Toole with Carrie O'Toole Ministries, and I am joined again today by Melinda Cadwallader. Hello. Nice Hello. to have you back. Thank you. So we have a special guest with us here today. We do. Would you maybe <laughs> introduce our guest? So today we have with us my daughter, Delia. Um, say hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. This is really fun to yeah. be able to have your daughter on today. How, how do you feel be, being here? I'm pretty excited. I enjoy sharing it. Do you? So well, you have a story. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, uh, most of the time, we talk to different people who have been through really difficult times in their yeah. life and times that made them just feel broken, either physically or emotionally or spiritually or maybe all of the above. And you have been through something that most teens have never, I mean, most people in their life maybe will never have experienced, but you experienced mm -hmm. something as a child yeah. that was really scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you mind telling us your story? Um, when I was 10, I was diagnosed with leukemia, which is a type of cancer that's in your blood. And I was in the hospital for about seven months. And oh I had, my goodness. I had several rounds of chemotherapy and lost my hair and... Wow. Yeah. You know, so take us back to that time. So you were 10. Mm -hmm. And what was your life like? What what was going on in your life? Were you feeling sick? Um, yeah, I think it was like about a whole month before I got diagnosed. That whole month, it was like really painful. Like I was sick all the time. I was super tired. Hmm. And that never, wasn't normal for you. Yeah, you had no, been, it wasn't normal. But it never really faced me that it was anything bigger than just... You just thought sick. you were kind of having yeah. a bad month where mm -hmm. things just weren't feeling good. So it hadn't been going on for years and years no. where you thought, ooh, I wonder if something's going on. It just kind of smacked you out of the blue. Exactly. So how did you find out? Um, I think it got up to the point where it was like really bad and my dad ended up taking me to a clinic and they checked my blood and then they called him one morning and to, told us to go to the hospital and like right then right then it was just one morning I was eating cereal and it then, was your wow. gums it was, when your gums started to her yeah. gums started to swell so oh. I'm, 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 I told Delia this on the way here that I'm going to have a hard time not, you know, <laughs> interjecting. And I've already told, you know, a mother's perspective of her right, story. Right. So I'm letting her share her story. <laughs> I'm really trying. Yeah, but you know what? Was, I'm thinking as a 10-year-old, yeah. you may not remember some yeah, of those I, details I, I about don't. what was going on. The so. morning that she came into our room, um, in our bedroom, and she's like, my lip feels swollen. And we took pictures her lip was swollen. It looked like a puncture wound. And, mm. her, and then we noticed her gums were starting to, like, swallow her teeth. And we laughed about, oh, you must have swallowed a spider last oh, night. Yeah. And it bit you before you swallowed You're it. You're going to be and spider we laughed about it. Like, we laughed. And poor thing was like, what? A spider? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It was worse than so a spider, was, though. Yes. And it never went away. It, that that wow. um, the puffiness, the swelling. We have pictures of Thanksgiving, which mm -hmm. was um, a, you know a couple, no, two weeks before the diagnosis. Yeah. We look back at those pictures at Thanksgiving, and we are like, "How did we not know something was going on?" Yeah. Her it probably came was, on so gradually, huh? Yes, and they wow. looked. The pictures really looked creepy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. So you're sitting at breakfast one morning, and you find out you have to go to the hospital. Yeah. My dad didn't tell me anything. He just said, get in the car, get in the car. And I was so tired, I just got in the car. Yeah, then, you're not really thinking too much yeah, at that point. Yeah, and I woke up and we were at the hospital, and it was crazy. So, how did you find out that you had leukemia, and did you know what that was? What um, did it mean to you? What did they tell you? I don't really remember. Do you remember, like, when or how he told me? Were you already checked I, in at the hospital? I think so. But I yeah. was so tired. Just really I, out of it. I was so out of it. So mm -hmm. you may have heard something, but then it didn't really register yeah. till later. Mm -hmm. When did you When did you start realizing there's something really wrong with me? Um, I think it was 
like a week after when they wow. already done like the surgeries and stuff and started the chemo and I started to actually wake up. I really realized. So you were just serious. like out yeah. for about a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that first week is when they implant the port mm -hmm. under her skin, uh -huh. which is where they um, give her the chemo once a week. We so this was not intravenous. Th this was done through a port. Yes. Okay. So that, that initial surgery, you know, before the hair fell out, before she was feeling the effects of chemo, here was this thing inserted into her. They, had, they did a spinal tap. They did all the prerequisites wow. before chemo can be administered. And that first week in the hospital was that reality check of, oh, this is what's happening. This is what we're up against. This, this is, is what life is going to look like. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So you finally start grasping what this means. Yeah. What was that like for you at 10 years old? I don't. I don't think I even knew how serious it was. Like, I'd never really... There was nobody in our family who got cancer. Like, I... You didn't have any friends I had no who friends had cancer. who had cancer. So I didn't even know how serious it was. I just saw, like, the commercials you sometimes see on TV with the kid with the bald head. But well, that's true. I was thinking most yeah. of the commercials are old people. Yeah. Not children, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. You do see it, you do see them sometimes here with children, but I'm yeah. thinking, man, most of the time when you think cancer, you're thinking, you know, 80 year old mm -hmm. people or something yeah. like that. So here, you're 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So, what was, what were the feelings as you kind of started processing that? Were you angry? Were you scared? Were you? What was going on? I was pretty scared. I was. I was really confused about it all, but then, like, the first couple weeks came on, and then I just, whenever I fully grasped, like, what cancer was, it was really scary. Like, mm -hmm. I was so clueless about it that I didn't really know what to expect. Well, I think, you know, for children, that's a time of innocence, and yeah. it's not a time when you want to be talking yeah. about, oh, here are some diseases that could potentially take your life. Yeah. yeah. Parents don't typically warn their children about this, and you don't even really want to talk about it that mm -hmm. much because there's a whole life ahead of you to have to worry about big adult things. This is a huge yeah. adult yeah. thing that as a 10-year-old you were having to not only process for yourself, but even try to understand right, what yeah. it is. What what are we even talking about? I've never I heard of this. I remember the first couple of weeks, um, just being in that fog of what's happening and in our staying in our room. But once we started venturing out, became a whole new world because the whole seventh floor of the hospital was cancer ward. So she was starting to see little kids with bald heads being pulled around in wagons. Mm -hmm. Kids her age who were missing limbs, who were hooked up to machines walking mm -hmm. around. Like the reality, once we started leaving our room, it was even a bigger reality. Well, you see of what's some of the on. even more severe yeah. cases. Yeah. You see some who are doing well, some who aren't doing well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you start, you know, you've been there for a couple of weeks, you're starting to understand what life is going to be like. What was it like? What was your daily life like? Live, you lived at a hospital for seven months. Once we got settled in. T tell her about our Yeah, days. once we got settled in and we finally got the hang of it. and Did it feel like your it, room a little yeah. bit? You were able well, to make it kind of your room? Yeah, what we did was we would decorate the whole room in splashes of color because it was just white blank walls. Ugly hospital and, walls. Yeah, so we had to jazz it up a little bit and so we put my favorite uh, animal were, was owls so we had owls all over the room I would I would um they had a little playroom I guess uh -huh. on the seventh floor I would go over there and I would do some beading and make some bracelets and and then sometimes we would go try take a trip and just like walk around the different floors there was like fish there was like a fish tank on one floor after hours after kind of sneak hours around yeah. <laughs> you little sometimes, rebels yes. you're breaking the rules yeah, sometimes we, we found some interesting back. rooms too yeah, we <laughs> that weren't some, locked yeah <laughs> it's very strange we would find the we would <laughs> find the back doors and yeah. and then we ended up um 
like actually out of the hospital there was another area for I think the people that worked there or something but there was like the university hospital was behind oh, yeah. children right right and we found like they had like a cold stone and they had like oh. all these big pieces of art and stuff and we would go take fun pictures and stuff so you had a little so, adventure yeah. here and there too huh mm-hmm. now were you um were you foggy during this time, or were you pretty alert and you knew what was really going on? Um, I mean, after the beginning part. Yeah, after the beginning, I am I think I was more alert mm-hmm. and more aware. But I, te- I tried not to think about it most of the time. I tried to just keep making myself happy and trying to look at the positive side. So you weren't sitting in the hospital wishing you were at school and wishing you were with your friends or did that happen some? Yeah, I had some days like that. I would I would like write in my diary or whatever and I would miss my friends, but I I they had FaceTime so we could FaceTime my friends and so yeah, I did have some rough days that were just I wanted to be alone and mm-hmm. just mm-hmm to myself but there were other days that I just wanted to not think about that well this all sounds pretty normal I you know I'm I'm sitting here trying to think how would I be in that situation and I think as adults maybe we would overanalyze things way too much we know too much about cancer so the fears would get even bigger maybe the fact that you didn't know Mm -hmm. too much about it maybe that was a good protection for you that you didn't mm-hmm. need to know yeah. all of the fe- scary things that could potentially happen. Mm-hmm. All you needed to deal with was what was going on each day and yeah. what life was like today. What What's today going to be? And it sounds like you were able to find little adventures and oh, yeah. stay connected with your friends and find all the places in the hospital and en- enjoy the time with your family and mm-hmm. all of that. Oh my goodness, yeah. this is it's just quite a story. Did it seem like the time was really getting slow after a while? I mean, was there a time when you are like, I am so ready to go home? Well, every morning you would get this number and determine on the number if it was, like, higher. I think if it were, if it was closest to 100, then that means you were getting better. And then Mm. whenever you finally hit 100, you could get out of there. So every day you would get the count and see what number you were at. And sometimes the number would be really high and we'd be super excited and go have fun, but sometimes you'd get it and it's really It'd low. Drop. And then that <clears> day <throat> would be really sad. So then, <laughs> we, so then we ended up just not asking to get the number. So then we Tell could, us when we're at 100, huh? Yeah, exactly. Well, each round, ra- we went through, we, she went through five rounds <laughs> of chemo. And after each round, your body has to recuperate Mm -hmm. before they can administer the next round. So during the recuperation, they're charting and graphing your numbers and your levels and all this stuff. And and you get a break. You're able to go home for like three or four days Mm. in between each round. Mm. So that's why like... After a round of chemo, we'd, we'd, we'd build her up, like, eating well, drinking mm-hmm. the right things, supplements, things like that. And then once she reached a certain point, we'd get to go home. So it was always this roller coaster of, what's the numbers? Okay, we're getting close. When we knew that on the horizon was a break and being able to go home, it was like those numbers were like, they started to rule our day. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it wasn't until one morning... <laughs> It was a beautiful sunny day. We woke up. We're like, let's not look at the number. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to look at the number. So we go out. We get our breakfast. Yeah. We went and sat out on the patio at their cafeteria. Mm-hmm. And we're just like, we don't care about that number. Yeah. We don't care about it. <laughs> we're going to have a good day no matter yes. what that number says. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. What was it like getting to go home? Oh, mm. get, going home was wonderful. Like, Hanging out with my little brother and my little... Or no, it was just no. my little sister at the time. <laughs> yeah. but um, He but, wasn't born yet. Yeah. <laughs> it was just my little sister was like the world because... Well, your mom was saying she couldn't come, yeah, right? Yeah, she wasn't old enough to come up. And mm. she could only come up for Christmas for like, mm. I think... Two hours. Two hours. And then she had to go back down. So you were missing her, I so, bet. yeah. Yeah. Any time I got to see her, I would oh, have to wow. stay with her. How old was she at the time? Do you remember? I don't. What time? We had her second she? birthday at the hospital. We oh, got to okay. have oh, her so in she a was room little. there so that Dee could come because mm-hmm. she couldn't oh. leave. And 
that was her. Wow. Her Wow. So when you went home during those times in between chemo, did you try and see all your friends and everything, or did you really just have to keep it pretty it was, yeah, calm? It was mostly pretty calm because I was still sick, and I didn't have all the medicine I did at the hospital, so I wasn't really as active, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and nights would be rough. Mm -hmm. A couple times we would have to go back to the hospital earlier because mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling well. Mm. But I think I visited my school a couple times, but I was just... For the most part, it was just recuperating yeah. and getting your strength back. Mm -hmm. So seven months comes to an end, and you, you're finally released yeah. mm -hmm. and able to go home. What was that like? That was amazing. I mean, I was like so free. I had no IV. I could see anybody I want. And it was just great. I got to catch up on everything, you know? Did like, it feel like life yeah. started again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the little things about going to the bathroom without wheeling a cart, yeah. those Ugh. were just like, <laughs> those were big deals, mm -hmm. you know? Like, Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, because she would wake up in the night and I'd have to untangle all the cords so she'd yeah. go to the bathroom, you know? Right. That kind of living was just... Mm -hmm. Very dependent. But I, re I really want you to share what what you wrote about like what during your during your treatment like what what did you do that was the the one thing that kept you focused on hope and staying hopeful and staying positive um the main thing was most i i did write a book the children. Oh, oh just at that. 10 years oh, old. Oh, I happened to just write a book. Oh my goodness. What was your book? It was a children's book and it was it was called Hootie's Journey and it was about an owl who went through cancer and she lost all her feathers and she oh, was sick. Oh my goodness. But then afterwards because when I was done with my treatment my hair grew back, but it grew back super curly, and it was... It so it had not been curly it, before? No, it wasn't <gasps> as curly. It was wavy, but it came back, like, Ringlets, ringlets. like these, this afro. Like, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Funny. So, so, about my book, um, Hootie lost all her feathers, and then when she was done with cancer, and she was getting healthy again, her feathers grew back rainbow. Oh, how fun! <laughs> yes. Now, what did you do with this book? What's your hope for that book? Um, I still need to publish that dang book, but... <laughs> uh, honey, uh, I have to tell you, it's... I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I had a book that I wrote, and it, I wrote it three years ago, mm -hmm. and I just got it published mm -hmm. this year. It was like, yeah. once I wrote it, I sort of had to let it go for a while, because it was yes. very personal, it was very difficult, it was yeah. all the pain. And then after I had healed up for a while, I got the energy back and it was like, I can do this. Yeah. And I pulled it back out and just got it done. Yeah. So yes. I'm sure that that will happen when you're ready, yeah. you know. And it's a, I mean, it's a beautiful story and she created it all. She, she had the character, she came up with the characters oh and who they were and what they looked like. And so we have this book and it is kind of that, like after a while we started reading it after leaving the hospital and right. kind of getting back into life when we started picking up the book again it was a little painful to read yeah. we right. couldn't get through it without crying and right. we feel like in this next year it's it's going to be time to get back at it and, right. and make it what she originally wanted it to be well now i just saw on facebook like last week what happened last week didn't you have a doctor's appointment or something yeah what was last that last week was my last doctor's appointment here for getting checked to see if I got it again and it was amazing because he said that the chance of getting it again was in the single digits oh. was, so that marks You're like clean. the fourth year mm -hmm. of remission Four years. and he said wow. my next summer is year five and that's technically when there the chance is right closest to zero is after right. five years right of it, um, recurring so well you know I just want to ask you if you could share what this whole experience, if you can sum it up, what what did you learn? What would you like other people to know? Um, I, I don't even know really what questions no, to ask, but do you kind of understand? Yeah. What would you like to say about it? I feel like 
sometimes you do need to after in if you're in a hard situation sometimes you do you do need to cry it out and you do need some time to think and just some time to be alone but you mostly need to find the positive side and you need to find the bright side of things and find what makes you happy and find something that is a pickup for you and yeah, something that can get you through it because that that's a great thing to have. So did you just wake up each day and think, okay, even if I can't just think of something positive right off the top of my head because I'm hurting or I feel really sad or whatever, that focus was just there that, you know what, even if this hurts, even if it's a hard thing for me to do, I'm going to find something mm -hmm. positive? Every day was different. Every day I had something different to brighten me up and make me happy and well you know. I have I've heard that that attitude that um conscious effort is really what makes a difference in cancer sometimes mm -hmm. you know it's not necessarily the physical strength of the person but it can be the attitude or the outlook or whatever that you have that can really help you kick it mm -hmm. yeah. because I think if you if you sink down into it, it can kind of take you. Yeah. And so that's a pretty amazing thing. I don't know. She has a friend in high school right now who mm -hmm. is, has just finished up treatment mm -hmm. and was in the hospital. And I was so proud of Delia just reaching out to her mm -hmm. and encouraging her and supporting her and anything that had to do with fundraisers for this gal. Delia was all for it. And that's that just well, tells you know, so if you much haven't been through, to share that. yeah, if you haven't yeah. been through something that difficult before in your life, it may be difficult to understand when somebody else is going through it, and you might just yeah. look at them and go, "Well, I don't get that," but mm -hmm. you get that. Yeah. When you see somebody really struggling with something that's kind of beyond their control, I bet you have a lot more compassion mm -hmm. for them. I bet your heart hurts yeah. a little bit for them. You want to do what you can do. Did this change you? Did it make you a different person? It really did. It really made me, bl it made me realize how blessed I am to be able to wake up and see my family every morning, to not have to carry around a machine all day, and and to be healthier, <laughs> you know. So and just get back to being and, a kid. I think right. that was what we wanted for her the most when when we got out was like. Ugh. You shouldn't have been there in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, fifth grade should should not have yeah. entailed fifth that grade. experience. Oh my goodness. So that was it. You know, we when we got out and we had this make a wish vacation, we went to Hawaii and it was just Oh neat. Yeah. Let's release it all and let's be kid let her be a kid again. Let's go have let some her just fun. all she wants to do is just, you know, go shopping and yeah. hang out with her friends and play Wii play and just let's dance. just let her do that. Right. And Instead of having to back. think about life and death situations yeah. and how am I gonna deal with all this today. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> you really are an amazing young woman, mm -hmm. and I'm really thankful that you were willing to come on here. It is it scary to you to talk about it at all, or do you kind of enjoy being able to share your story? Yeah, I I enjoy it a lot. I like telling people, and it's good for me to let it out. Yeah, yeah. well, I think it's going to be very encouraging to other people too and that's my hope is that yeah. um, people will pass this video around mm -hmm. and and get mm -hmm. it to the people who maybe are have children that have cancer or yeah. some other sickness or something anybody who's in the hospital or who's laid up at home or whatever um, I think you've had some really good words of wisdom and you've you've come through it so well and you look beautiful you've got this beautiful hair and <laughs> You don't look at all like a child who has been through cancer. I mean, I don't know what that's supposed to look like, but you yeah. look very healthy and happy, and your attitude is wonderful. Your spirit is just blooming, and I'm so excited for you and so thankful that you've been here to share this with us. So yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. Well, Melinda, thank, thank you. you so much for bringing Delia oh, with you today. Bringing her into the world. Yes. Yeah. yeah well, that too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's not go there. Well, she is. <laughs> I think, if anything, I think she's this beacon of hope for kids her age, too, to, to be encouraged 
that you know if they know someone nowadays it is more common that right. kids are being well, diagnosed with facebook and, and right. stuff too you you oh, hear about absolutely. things all the time but to see what it looks like and right. she went and spoke at a school and to see the questions kids ask are so funny right. but it's such from a kid's perspective and she reaches that and absolutely it's so it's so neat she is just this beacon of hope well we will be looking for your book yes. and yeah. when it comes out let me know and we'll we'll put it out there on a podcast so people yeah. can find it that would be great thank you again i i so appreciate you coming and we will see you all next here next time here on broken and brilliant